Hello everyone, welcome to Aptitude Jab. This is a calculation based DI based on a bar graph and a line graph. The graph shows the voter strength and the percentage turnout in the elections of a constituency for six consecutive terms 1991 to 2016. The elections are held every five years. Okay, now uh, the bar graph shows the voter strength in thousand. How many people uh, appeared for the voting? And the line graph, the one in the orange, gives the turnout percentage. Okay, this is in thousands and this is in percentages. Now, we are given these questions. Let us see that what are the questions that one must attempt in the examination and which should be the least preferred and the most preferred ones. Okay, first says, what is the average voter turnout during the six terms? So, in this case, you need to calculate that voter turnout in all these six years and then take the average. So, definitely not the first choice. <clears throat> what is the ratio of the non-voters? Direct question. One can easily calculate. In which term was the percentage increase in the number of non-voters the highest as compared to the previous term? Again, can be done easily uh, by just using these years and calculating. And the last one says the percentage increase in the number of eligible voters was the highest during which decade? Eligible voters, which is as straightforward as these values. Okay, so this should be the first criteria. This should be the second one. So I'm writing the order in which one must attempt these questions. First, second, third, and the last one if time permits. Okay, so we shall solve these questions in this order. So the first question is, what is the ratio of non-voters in 1996 to the non-voters in 2011? Direct ratio based question, 1996, non-voters is 42.5% okay of 48000 to 2011 so in 2011 we see 67.5% is the voters so non voters will be 32.5 into 68 okay so when we reduce we get 12 by 17 and these are multiples of 25 17 into 25 and 13 into 25 so we get 12 ratio 13 so easiest question to pick okay had you started with this question you would have wasted a lot of time on it next we shall do this the percentage increase in the number of eligible voters was the highest during which decade okay so 2006 to 16 6 to 16 we have 70 62 becomes 76 so increase of 14 by 62 okay 2001 to 11 we have increase of 14 over 54 okay next 96 to 2006 96 we have an increase of 14 over 48 and the last one is 1991 to 2001 okay so we have an increase of 10 over 44 now this is a very very simple thing to do uh, see uh, you know that it is uh, like if you look at these values okay uh, 14 the denominator is different right numerator is same so whenever the numerator is same the denominator are different so we need to check for the least denominator so this value is higher than both of these so these two cannot be the answers now let us compare this and this 14 out of 48 and 10 out of 44 right it is less than one fourth okay and it is clearly more than one fourth so this also gets removed so without doing any calculation without calculating the percentage increase we answered this question by just observing the numbers okay so if it asks which has the highest percentage increase it does not mean that you need to actually calculate the percentage increase you can just observe the values and answer the questions okay next question in which term was the percentage increase in the number of known voters the highest as compared to the previous term okay so we need to check for four terms one is 2016 okay then 1996 uh, then we have 2011 and 2006 so we need to compare with respect to the previous one okay now again in this question no need to calculate the no need to calculate the non-voters okay the the common thing people would do is they will calculate the number of non-voters and they would say that it's a very calculation intensive question now again we will use the uh, concept of observation now we know that these are voters, right? These are voters. So non-voters will be like 100 minus this, like 37.5. This is 42.5, 35, 30, 
32.5 and this is 35. Okay, we need to find in which term was the increase in non-voters the highest. Okay, and it is percent increase. So 1991 to 96, if we see this, this is becoming 37.5 is becoming 42.5, a little over 10 percent. Okay, it is more than 10 percent and it is also roughly 10 percent. Okay, so this is like you can say that in 1996, this is like 5 out of 37.5, which is greater than like you can say that 10 and 10, more than 10 percent. Okay, roughly 10. Okay, 2000, uh, then we look at 2006. In this, there is a decrease in this number. Okay, this was 35 percent. This is now 30 percent only. Although this number is increasing, this number is decreasing. So, this does not sound to be a good sign. Okay, so 2006 should not be considered because the percentage has decreased. Okay, uh, the num overall number might increase but not as significantly as in this case. Okay, same let us check for 2011. In this there is uh, slightly somewhere 10% increase and this is less than 10% increase, right? In 2011 it is 8% and 10% roughly. And 62 to 68 increase of 6 less than 10 and this is 8%, right? 8 and 10. And 2016 if we see again it is 32.5 to this. So we can say that again somewhere around 8%. Okay. Less less than 8% and some 11%. Right. 8 and 11% roughly we can say that. Okay. Now if you see this definitely this is not going to be the answer. Right. We need to see it's a compounding thing. So we are compounding on two things. One is the percentage of uh, non-voters and secondly the percentage of uh, this the number of voters okay so if we see the values 1996 looks the most promising okay so if you calculate this is uh, these values uh, we see that it is much higher so even like if you talk about this well this percentage increase 37 to 42.5 this is basically 5 by 37.5 Okay, and uh, if we, uh, like we can call it 1 by 7.75, 7.5, which is roughly 13% in fact. Okay, so this is 13% increase in this and 10% increase in this. So total compound effect will be the highest in 1996. So without doing the calculations, we can say that this will have the highest percentage increase. Not only because the number of voters increase, but also the percentage of non-voters increased drastically. So you can make the actual calculations and see that if it turns out to be true and I'm sure it will be. Okay, so this is how we do this. All right, what is the average voter turnout during the six terms? So again, a question to be skipped. Let's do this. Okay, let's do this thing and uh, let's find out the voter turnout in this. So 62.5, which is 5 by 8 of 44. 44 uh, by 8 is 5.5. 5.5 into 5 is 27.5. Uh, so 27.5 thousand. Okay, 57.5 percent of 48. 48 into 60 is 28,800. And 2.5 percent will be 1.2 thousand because uh, 2.5 percent is 1 by 40. So 1.2 thousand. This will be 27600. Okay, you can check the calculations also. 54 into 65. See how do we do these calculations? 54 into 65. I do not know the table of 65, but I know the table of 13. Okay, 27 into 13. So uh, 13 uh, into 30 is 390. 351. And then it is 62 into 7, 16 into 7 is 4, 420, 434, double zero. And this is 67.5. 68 into 70 is 476, 476, double zero. Okay. And, uh, and, and we have to subtract 2.5%, 1 by 4, that is 1700. Okay, 459 double zero. Okay, please check these calculations. I don't think uh, like I'll make some mis many many mistake, but again, uh, we'll see that if the answer turns out to be correct, that will give an idea. 76 into 65, right? 76 into 65, we need to do. Again, we will do the same thing. We will multiply by 130 and 38. 38 uh, is uh, 380, 380 plus 114, 494. 
So this will be 494.00. So all are multiples of 100. So we need to find the average of 275, 276, 351, 434, 459, and 494. Now all these values are 38, 37, 38, 39, 38. Okay. So let us pick a number. Let's say 38. Right? Let us pay, say that our average is 380. Okay, just assume that our average is 380 and using deviations, we will be able to figure out what is the exact average. Why 380? Because it is like 38,000. Okay, 494 was the last value. Okay, so 380, if we say this is minus 105, minus 104, this is minus 29, this is uh, 54 and this is 79114. Okay, 114 gives you plus 10 plus 10 and uh, this is uh, plus 10 89 minus 16 okay minus 45 uh, and 54 54 minus 45 is 9 so 9 by 6 right 38000 plus 9 by 6 9 by 6 now what is 9 we have converted to hundreds right so uh, that is why we will multiply by 100 okay so 380 plus 9 by 6 it's coming right 380 plus 9 by 6 which is 381.5 and we converted it to 100 so we will actually get 38150 okay so this is how you get the average now another technique right let us try to understand that how can we estimate the average through another method although not very accurate but still you will get a very close answer because these values are slightly far apart i mean i'm not saying that too much far apart now if you see these this average thing right this average line is somewhere around 65 okay so if you take the average of this i guess you will get 65 only 65 65 balanced out uh, five more uh, so 62.5 and 67.5 balance out to 65 uh, this is close to like close to 65 we can say okay this is although slightly less than 65 the average but uh, you have higher weights here and higher percentage than 65 so i'll just assume that 65 percent of uh, these values so this is 92 146 200 and uh, 146 uh, plus 132 76 352 352 and divided by 6 okay so this comes out as somewhere around 60 uh, 11 uh, 11 times 11 times into 35 i'll do 385 385 i'll get but not roughly uh, since there are two options which are close uh, may not be the correct way to do it but still close to this right since if there if there are far, even far apart like 38,150 30 40,000 and all then you could have used this technique uh, not getting exact value but still that is one of the methods you should use when the values are uh, far apart okay so if the values are close like this in this case it is like just a matter of 500 and all so 400 so difficult call so this is how you will calculate the average so that is the solution to the set and the answers to the questions.